Hello, everybody, and welcome to Mute Me, a debate show here at ESPN where we get some of the brightest, wittiest, and sharpest minds at ESPN to argue some of the most controversial topics in the world of sports. I'm Alexis Tunis. I'll be your host for today, and let me introduce the panel to you. We have ESPN journalists, very bright journalists, to Rodrigo Fais and Julian Laurence, and the man who lit up our screens playing for Arsenal, former Arsenal player himself, Stuart Robson, who is now one of our top ESPN FC analysts. All right, gents, so we're going to go straight into round one. You have 60 seconds within which to argue your point, and you're going to try and argue it all the way to the 60 seconds without having anybody disagree with you, because then they can hold up their mute sign, and you guessed it, you will be muted. Let's start off with the man that entered this world before, way before any of us did, Stuart Robson. Stu, what's your topic? Lukaku is now one of the world's best strikers. And the reason I say that, at the beginning, at the beginning of the season, when he first went to, to Inter, it was going to be a make or break season. And if you play for Antonio Conte, you're going to have to be good with your back to goal. Because be, more than any other team in the land, or in, in the world at the moment, people play the ball into the front place. If he didn't play well, Inter weren't going to be a very good team. After the first six or seven games, I thought he was going to fail. But since then, he's been magnificent as a striker. He scored goals. I'm not going to give you all the stats, but over 30 goals. He's done brilliantly in the Europa League, but he's now been a link-up player. His understanding of the game is much better. Ball's coming into his feet. He's holding on to it. He's letting other people join in with him. He's formed a great understanding with Lautaro Martinez. He scored goals that other players wouldn't score from the halfway line, rolling defenders, running with it up pace, mm. scoring goals into the far corner. He looks a much better player now than he ever has done. He's going back to the days where he scored those brilliant goals for Everton every so often. Now he's scoring them week in, week out. He's got everything you want from a centre forward at this particular moment. All right. He can hold on to the ball. Bravo. He made it all the way to one minute. Rodrigo, why weren't you having it? Well, the thing is that I agree with Stuart that Lukaku is one of the maybe... 10, maybe 15, maybe 20 best strikers in the world. But the thing is that he's only physically. I mean, he's, uh, he's very big, he's very powerful. But what about the talent? He's, he's not really talent. See, that's a stereotypical of a big centre forward, saying he can only hold up the play, he's big and he's strong. His actual understanding with Martinez has been magnificent this season. Wow, words that we did not think we would hear just about a year ago. But Stuart Robson arguing passionately about Lukaku. Never thought I would see the day. You must be his agent. Moving on now to the next topic. We're going to have Julian Laurence do this one, Jules, because you were a little quiet in this one, I suppose, because we weren't talking about any Frenchmen. But what's oh, your... I just agreed with Robbo. So I, I, I thought about muting him, and then I, I just, everything he said, I sort of fell in love with Robbo and Lukaku in the same oh, Fair enough. <laughs> you're, you're only human, Jules. So what's your topic? My topic is that Robert Lewandowski is currently, right now, right now, in this moment in time, the best player in the world. Forget about Leo Messi, forget about Cristiano Ronaldo, forget about Kylian Mbappe and that pains me to say this, or mm. Kevin De Bruyne, Lewandowski has to be the best player in the world right now. 53 goals. This is the kind of numbers that only Messi and Ronaldo at the peak of the career of their talent were producing. No one else can do 53 goals a season. He's got 13 in the Champions League already. He's only four behind Cristiano as the record ever. More score, more goals scored. Mm. Oh, oh, he's been muted. I was wondering how long because Rodrigo was about to pass out there. Rodrigo, what's wrong with that? <laughs> I, I was, I was going to mute Julian at the first sentence, but I was like, okay, I'm going to let him explain. But you know, how do you say that in a world uh, ruled by Messi? How do you say that? He's a player for Bayern Munich, you know, and Bayern Munich doesn't really have any rival in the Bundesliga. I mean, it's so, so crazy that. Oh, well, my view is that, yeah, Robert Lewandowski is certainly not the best player in the world at the moment. He's a very good player. But Messi is far and away the best player in the world. And if you want to be the best player in the world, you've got to score goals out of nothing. Lukaku scores goals out of nothing. At the moment, Robert Lewandowski finishes off brilliantly when other players are, are creating for him. And that's why I wouldn't say he's the best player in the world. I can't believe Robert managed to squeeze in Lukaku yet again. I know, oh, this is one. taking the mix. That... Listen, <laughs> Messi is the GOAT and will, ever, will always be. But right now, after this season, a season where Barcelona have struggled, where Messi, okay... Still good numbers. I think he's 25 goals and 21 or 22 assists in La Liga. This is great. But come on, Lewandowski has been walking on water the whole season in the Champions League and Ooh. in the Bundesliga. And by the way, the Bundesliga, Rodri, my friend, has been far more competitive this season than La Liga has been. No way, no way, no way. Oh, I'm not agreeing with that. 
I don't agree with that. I Come mean, on. La Liga, the good thing of La Liga this year is that Real Madrid and Barcelona get, get a little bit, uh, well, one step behind. And um, it equalizes the rest of the potential of the teams. I mean, but it's not, it's not like, I mean, Bundesliga, only Borussia Dortmund, Bayern Munich, and what else? So it's what else? Rodri's time to shine. You made your point. It's now time for Rodri, who's had an issue with what both of you have said. So I'm going to see how quickly it's going to take for both of you to try and mute him. Rodri, it's your time to shine. So what's your topic? I'm going to be kicked out of this uh, local show. Uh, whatever. Um, why Simeone is better than Fidan? I know that, you know, Zidane and Real Madrid has better trophies, international trophies, and maybe local trophies, much better than, uh, than Simeone. But the thing is that, uh, for me, Simeone, he reads uh, games much, much better than Zidane's because, I mean, Simeone is someone that really works, really works very deep in, in every game. doesn't really matter if he's playing against Barca or against Villarreal. And he has proved uh, within the years that he could uh, beat anyone, that Atletico Madrid could beat anyone. doesn't really matter if he were uh, Bayern Munich, Man City, Man United, Real Madrid. Oh, he's been muted. All right, Jules, we'll let you in first then. I'm not sure if I, did I hear properly that Diego Simeone right now is a better manager than Zinedine Zidane, who just won La Liga after winning La Liga already in 2017 and three Champions League in a row. Right, Zinedine Zidane, who by the way has not the same experience than Diego Simeone has as a manager. He's been a, he's a much younger manager than Simeone and yet has learned so quickly. He's more pragmatic than Simeone. He can evolve different systems, different tactics, different way of playing. He won before being really attacking and having a lot of goals. He won because of Cristiano Ronaldo and Sergio Ramos. That's all. But now there's no Ronaldo anymore. So he still did it. In La Liga, because said, Barca like, lost the, t the title. Simeone and Atletico haven't All right, the we're going to call it the end. Ding, 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 ding. That is the end of round one. What a feisty round that was. Oh, my goodness. Thank goodness we have to social distance and keep you guys far away from each other. But, I mean, like I said, there's not really winners of each round. But if I had to choose one, I mean, it was really tough because um, the fact that I saw Robbo show more emotion than I've ever seen him show in his 95 years on this earth arguing about Lukaku and managed to bring him in twice. That would give him a top one. But you know what? It took some serious footballs for Jules to say that Robert Lewandowski might even be better probably in the world right now than Lionel Messi. So Jules, I'm going to give you that one. Oh, no, no, no. That one. oh he's not having it. Anyways, guys, we're going to go right into round two now. So this one, you're going to make your statement. So you're going to say exactly the statement that you believe is true right now and then we're going to immediately mute you and the rest of the guys that aren't muted will jump in and probably say why they disagree with you and for this one we're going to start with jules jules take it away what's your statement my statement is that mauricio sari was not the problem at juventus well yeah i don't think sari was always the main problem but there was he Got, didn't get the best out of Pjanic. He made Pjanic another Jorginho, who I don't like as a player. Uh, Pjanic went from being a, a great passer of the ball to being somebody that passed it square and backwards, and that's down to the Sari tactics. Uh, I don't know what this Sari ball is, because uh, I, I've never viewed it, I've never seen it, but he got some good players at, at Napoli to play a, a certain way, but they've carried on playing that way in the front areas ever since he's gone. So I don't think that Sari did a brilliant job at Juventus. It's the worst team I've seen at Juventus in the nine years that they've won the title. And I've done nearly every Juventus game over those times. Right. I'm going to draw the line there because Robbo, like I said, almost a century on this planet, he's covered a lot of Juventus games. So if someone knows what's going on at Juventus, it's Robbo. So we're going to leave it at that. And speaking of okay, Robbo, can I, can I answer back? Because there was a no, lot you're not beer. allowed there to. There's a lot of rubbish there. Can I answer, can I answer back or not? <laughs> There's a lot of rubbish there. <laughs> it's like talking I mean, come like on. dad. No, Jules, we've, no, got, we've got to no. move on to... Oh. It's like feisty French. No, no, okay, okay, if we have to move on, you're the boss. <laughs> Robo, what is your statement? No, uh, my, my statement is that extra time should be abolished. It's a complete waste of time. I've done many, many games over the years that have gone to extra time. Waste of time should be abolished. I mean, who, ca who cares? Uh, I mean, this, this is... I thought it was something like, I thought something big was going to happen. I mean, extra time. Uh, I don't know, some games I want to see them, like... The other night between Copenhagen and Manchester United, I thought Manchester United. I'm both muting Jules there because I'm a Manchester United fan and I did not even want to see a second of extra time of that game. It was painful, nearly clawed my eyelashes out. So, yeah, se acabó la fiesta. Rodrigo, what is your statement, Rodrigo? 
There are some games you want to see the you want to see 30 minutes more of that spectacle you've just seen. Mm. And it's frustrating you, to go straight to penalty. Gosh, Rodrigo, what is your topic? <laughs> Uh, well, my topic is why Man City is competed uh, much, much higher than it actually is. So Manchester City looking better than they really are? Gents? Uh, Man City are competing better than they really are or in a higher position they should be. Um, I'm not so sure that's the case. They've spent a lot of money on players. They've got a top class manager uh, in uh, one of the world's best managers. I think he probably is the best coach. Uh, I think he's got some very good players. Sometimes they don't defend well enough, but I wouldn't say that they're performing better than they should be. I think they should be at the top for most of the time. And I think they should win the Champions League this season. Uh, one question that I uh, ask you all. How many Mount City players would start for Real Madrid, Barca? How many? Well, first of all, Kevin De Bruyne is the best passer of the ball in the world. Uh, <laughs> so there's, okay. there's one. one? Uh, Aguero on his day, he's injured at the moment, but Aguero is still an excellent uh, mm -hmm. centre forward. Really? Laporte? Yes, still an excellent centre forward. Laporte will start at Real Madrid or Barcelona. There's a third one. Oh, Rodri's not buying that. I'm, I'm not really agree with that one. I he mean, doesn't I mean, buy that one. What about Raheem Sterling? I think Raheem Sterling on his day is a better player. On his day, but nowadays. Rodrigo or Gareth Bale. Did you just no. mention Gareth Bale there, Jules? <laughs> Who's Gareth Bale? saying that Sterling is better than, than, uh, than the golfer, yeah. Oh, on that note, we are going to end round two there because that was some serious shots fired from Rodri and that's probably why I'm going to... Rodri, I'll give you this round. Took some, took some nice dance to bring that around and I can't believe we snuck Gareth Bale into this, this debate somehow. Time for the final round, guys. Are you ready for this one? So I'm going to read out the topics and then whoever wants to take it, hand up, you take it first and then we'll argue it. Bruno Fernandes' stats only look good because of penalties. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, but it's not, it's not about his, his performances. haven't been about goals, just to be. He's a number 10. He plays in that role in behind. If you look at his assist, he's done very well on assist. He's a, he's a player that can bring others into the game. He's changed the way Manchester United play. They've suddenly got some creativity. I still don't think they're a great side, but he's added a bit extra to them. Whether he can do it over the course of the whole season next year, we'll have to wait and see but you don't base what he's done so far on his goals. So your comment is absolutely rubbish. <laughs> it, wasn't even, it wasn't even my comment. I'm just reading out the, the topics that were given to me. Oh, well, you, you have to take the blame for them sometimes. <laughs> Here's one. Robert Lewandowski should be the 2020 Ballon d'Or winner. Argue. That's, that, that's my whole point. You know, that was the first part. That was my topic in the first part. He's right now... The best player in the world, I think Bayern Munich will win the Champions League and he will shine even more. And had there been a Ballon d'Or this year, he would have won it. No, no I'm, not, I'm not agreeing with that. I mean, only he, he, the only thing that he did this year is score goals in Bundesliga, which is a minor league. I mean, he doesn't deserve any big, big, big prizes. The only other place that he could have scored in that amount of goals would be been in, in Liga. Because that's oh even more. I didn't expect you, Robson, to be <laughs> on Rodrigo's side, you know. But hang on, how many... How many clubs have uh, the Bundesliga still left in the Champions League? Two, like Spain and like France, by the way. Yeah, because the, the, the English guys have a long rest. They've, they've no, no, had no, a, no, the, have a long rest, ready to... The, left in the all race. right, boys, let's how reach out. When that league, our comment came, I had to like run for cover, save my mother, because I thought Jules was going to... But let's squeeze in another topic here. Will Neymar ever win a Champions League title whilst playing at... PSG? Never, ever, never, never. I'm muting myself. I'm muting myself. <laughs> never. Believe me and listen to me, Jules. Never. Because PSG is never going to win a title of the Champions League. Never, never. That's why uh, Neymar or Mbappé has to go away. PSG. I mean, it's something impossible in this world. I mean, that's not football. It's only million there. That's why he's not a team. You know, they look like Instagrammers, yeah. like a squad of Instagrammers. Come on. Ooh. Thomas Meunier got it absolutely right when he said that it's not a football club, it's a, it's a stargazing club. That's exactly what PSG are now. And someone like Jules, is, he loves all that because he likes the nightlife, he likes all the sort of uh, the, the stardom. So that's what he is as a journalist, and that's what he likes to be players. Jealousy. You're, so all, you're all jealous. <laughs> of, your, of your nightlife, or your, of your, your uh, lifestyle, or just jealous everything. of anything? Everything. Leave my Listen. clip alone. This season is our season. 
If it's one thing I have to say, I personally am jealous that Jules gets to be invited to Neymar's birthday parties because they look pretty lit. So I'm just going to side with Jules on this one because I love a good party. And Robo never invites me to his birthday parties. So just Robo like and so. don't like a big party, you know? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call Neymar, okay, for the next year. Okay, Neymar, oh. please come to Spain if you want to win something. Yes. Oh. Oh, on that note... We are going to end it right there. That was a massive mic drop from Rodri and a nice dab. So you know what, Rodri? Te felicito. Felicitaciones. You have Gracias. won this edition of Meet Me with your Neymar mic drop that sent Jules out. Thank you guys so much for playing. Thanks to all our viewers for watching. Make sure to tune in to ESPN for another feisty, saucy episode of Mute Me. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.